your CNC jobs are easy or simple, then it's also simple to see the mistakes and catch them uh, and correct them before they happen. But as those jobs get more complicated, uh, all those green lines can start looking like the chip pan under the lathe. So in this video, I'm going to go through five tools in FreeCAD Path that can help you understand what's happening with the toolpath, catch mistakes before they happen. All right, let's get started. Okay, to get started, I've got my uh, drilling sample project here, and I'm going to, I've already got a, a job created and two tools, a drill and a two flute end mill. So I'm going to create a drilling operation using the drill, and I'll also create a mill face using the two flute and uh, a contour operation using the same two flute. And already you can see that the, uh, uh, the path is getting pretty busy because of the small tool size. There's just a lot of lines on the screen. Um, so let's take a look at the tools that we have that help us uh, understand what's going on here. Now the first thing is, uh, is just the visualization. Um, you can obviously hover over any of these lines and see them highlighted. But I'll draw your attention that there's an arrow placed on the line and that is actually showing the direction of travel for the tool uh, on that, that segment. So it's coming from the top right to the bottom left in this case. Now also you're going to look down on the status bar and uh, you'll see that the, uh, the coordinates on the right side uh, that are changing are indicating uh, where in the 3D canvas. The, the, it's the coordinates of the point directly under the, my mouse pointer. Uh, but looking at the left end of that status line uh, where it says pre-selected, this is telling us that we're uh, working on the drilling one object with the mill face operation. 221 is the index. It's the position of this command within the list of commands for that operation. And then from G1 on down to uh, where the, uh, the parentheses start, that's the actual path command and the coordinates for the parameters that it's using. If I select one of the operations and switch to the View Properties pane, uh, I have a couple of properties here that uh, can be useful for uh, kind of cleaning up the view and help us to see what's going on. Uh, particularly in the show group, there's a count and uh, index, show count and show index. And what these do is they, con they control the number of path segments that are rendered on the screen. So if I set count to, say, 50, um, now you'll see that only the first 50 segments are shown on the screen. So I'm showing 50 starting at number 0. And if I change the position up to, say, 250, you'll see that I show 50 segments uh, starting at that point. And that can just uh, kind of help you narrow things down so it's not terribly overwhelming. Also in the... Uh, uh, the properties is there's a, a property here uh, in the path group called show nodes and if I turn that on to true uh, what this is doing is it's highlighting the the end point of each of the path segments now that's not terribly useful here so I'm going to turn it off uh, but there's one case where uh, it actually is useful and that is for something like drilling so I'm going to turn nodes on for drilling and then zoom in and you'll see that the, the endpoints are the start and end points for the drilling operation. If I change drilling, uh, this drilling operation to be a peck and uh, set the peck depth to say uh, 4, now you can see exactly where each peck cycle starts and ends. While we're looking at the properties, uh, I'm going to switch to the mill face and switch to the data properties tab. And if we scroll down to the path section, you'll see that there is a property called cycle time. And right now I'm showing cycle time error. What cycle time is showing you is approximately how long it's going to take to actually run. 
and I'm getting a cycle time error because the tool that I'm using, this two flute end mill, has no feed rate associated with it, so it isn't possible to calculate how long it's going to take. Let me set the cycle time to this to uh, one meter per minute. And then we'll switch back to the mill face and see that the uh, the cycle time estimate is now 24 minutes and 32 seconds. Okay, let's take a look at some of the tools on the toolbar. And the first one that we have is the inspection tool. And uh, this is disabled unless you have selected an individual operation and then the tool becomes active. Uh, and the speed key is PI. So if I select the drilling operation and type PI, we'll get this, uh, this uh, dialog which is showing what initially looks like, uh, like G-code but is not uh, actually G-code. These are the path commands that the, uh, uh, the operation is using. And uh, sorry if you can't quite read that, uh, it doesn't matter. What's important is that the, the coordinates here are all going to be in FreeCAD's internal units, which is millimeters. So even if you are using Imperial or US Customary, uh, you're going to see uh, metric here because uh, the, the conversion is done at post-processing time. Now the inspect dialog is useful uh, because as you kind of scrub up and down in here, it is highlighting the corresponding uh, segment in the 3D window. So it, it's fairly easy to find a command uh, that, that corresponds and, and see what's going on. Now obviously inspection has some limitations. Uh, it only works on individual operations, not on the whole job and it only shows you the command in uh, the metric uh, equivalent. So it's not going to be useful for uh, looking at the coordinates if you're using uh, US Customary or uh, Imperial. So the next tool in the toolbar is the simulator and it works on the entire job. Uh, it has a speed key of PM and if I click on the, the icon you'll see it first generates uh, a mesh that corresponds to my stock object and it gives me a control where I can run the simulation. I'm going to go ahead and start that and you'll see it starts to uh, to play out. And while it's playing out let me talk a little bit about uh, these controls. The speed is, controls how often the 3D window uh, or the simulation is going to update. Uh, so the, the faster it, it's set, the, uh, um, the more frequently it's going to update the window. And uh, this can be a little bit CPU intensive, and so you may want to back the speed down if, uh, if it's kind of locking up your machine. The accuracy is uh, this, it's showing 0.1% at this point. And what this is controlling is the size of the voxels that get removed at each stage of the simulation. Uh, think of a voxel as a little square a cube of material that is uh, subtracted from our solid. And uh, so right now it's removing a, a, a cube that's about 1% the size of the tool. And, uh, but it's always going to be kind of a cuboid. So uh, if I go ahead and stop this and then zoom in, uh, way down on to, uh, let me see if I can get this to show up for you. You see that I get a, a, a rough edges on the cut, uh, which wouldn't be the case in, in reality, uh, but it because we're removing square segments uh, or square units from the stock, the simulation is going to be rough, and that's controlled by that accuracy setting. That has the limitations that uh, if you have a say a very large uh, or a very small part being cut by a fairly large tool, uh, while well, a percentage of that large tool is still uh, is still going to be pretty rough. So the the accuracy that you get in the simulation may never be uh, what you what you want to see. Uh, it's just it, it it's just the nature of how the simulator works. Now the simulation is not running in real time. It's basically simulating as fast as it can. Um, and, and 
you know, you, what, if what you really want to see is just the final product, you can use this button at the end and it will jump all the way to the end without updating the 3D window until it's finished. And then we'll get the final simulation uh, that'll show the mesh. Now to exit out of the simulator, you got two options, OK and Cancel. And the difference between them is that if I press OK and return to the 3D window, it will leave the cut material, the resulting mesh, it'll leave it behind in the tree. Um, and then it's just any other, like any other uh, FreeCAD object, you can toggle the visibility or delete it. If you exit the dialog using the Cancel button, it'll automatically delete the mesh for you. Okay, the next tool to talk about is the uh, path sanity command uh, represented by this profile with the brain and this works on whole jobs so when you select the job it becomes enabled and if you press on it you won't necessarily see much happen in the 3D window uh, but it opened up a new tab in my browser. What sanity does is generates a, uh, a setup report for the job. Uh, the setup report is something that could be printed out and kept, but it's intended to be read by the operator at the machine. Uh, so he has everything at his, uh, at his fingertips uh, in order to, to correctly set up the job and, and run it. So there's going to be information in here about the, the base solid that we're trying to make and also the, the runtime and, uh, and also some information about the stock, so the size of the stock that needs to be placed. There's details in here about the tool, and if the tool has a thumbnail, the thumbnail will be shown. My drilling tool apparently doesn't have a thumbnail attached to it, so it just gets the FreeCAD logo. There's information about the output, when it was last post-processed, and where the file name for that uh, G-code file resides. There's information about the fixtures and the work holding. And then the bottom section is called squawks, and this is anything that Sanity has flagged as a possible problem. So in this case, both the drill and the two-flute tool controller don't have a spindle speed set, and uh, it, it's noting that as a problem. So Path Sanity has some limitations as well. Um, it is something that uh, I, I would like to see developed further to catch more of the most common errors that, uh, uh, that we make setting up jobs. Um, and it also has the limitation that if you want to generate the HTML report, what popped up in my browser, it requires a program called ASCII Doctor to be uh, installed as well. That's not included with FreeCAD. I believe it's available for all platforms, but it is a, uh, an, uh, an external installation. Uh, Path Sanity will generate the data that's required that's uh, in a markup format called ASCII Doc. Uh, but ASCII Doctor is uh, the tool that takes the ASCII Doc markup and creates the, uh, the HTML. So the last tool that I want to talk about is Chemotics. And Chemotics is a third-party simulator. It's a very nice application for simulating G-code. It is free and open source software uh, available for all the major platforms. Uh, the integration with FreeCAD is brand new. And uh, in fact, it does not exist in the 0.20 or earlier releases. Uh, it has just recently been merged into the master branch, the development version of FreeCAD. And uh, at the time uh, that I'm recording this video, uh, it is the, the current shipping version of Chemotics from their website is 1.2.0. And the version uh, for, that is required for FreeCAD is 1.2.2. So uh, at this point, you have to be able to compile uh, and install Chemotics yourself to test this. Uh, but um, that will change very soon, and then uh, it, it should be much easier to install Chemotics. Uh, the way that it works within FreeCAD is when PATH is launched, it checks to see if Chemotics is available on your system. And if it is, it adds a, another icon to the toolbar. And uh, if the job is selected, then the tool becomes active. You'll see that it has a speed key for PC, and, uh, or you can just click the icon. 
it'll bring up a dialog that's very similar to our internal uh, simulation system. Uh, the difference is it has a single slider that goes from zero, which is the beginning of the job, to the end. So dragging this slider along to an arbitrary position will cause Camotics to generate uh, a mesh corresponding to how it, what it would look like at that point in the job. Um, if I go all the way to the end, you'll see a resulting mesh solid that looks very much like what our internal simulator generated. Now this will, uh, this is an early release and this will get improved uh, over time. Uh, but right now that's, it's very limited in terms of what we can do internally to FreeCAD. The real power with this is that you can launch the Camotic simulation directly from here. And what this does is uh, takes all the information in the FreeCAD path job and it creates a Camotic simulation. It asks you to give it a name. I'll call mine Camotics Test. It suggests an extension of .camotics, and I save it. And, um, it, and then it will launch the Camotics application. I'm going to put FreeCAD in the background here. And now I can pan around. Um, you'll see that it generated a tool table and the output files. Uh, and, and everything is, is ready to go. And let me, I'll go ahead and run the simulator. Now, note that uh, it appears to be frozen and there isn't much that's happening. So what's hap what is happening is that Camotics is running the simulation in real time. And uh, so this will take as long as the job takes to run. But because I never configured a feed rate on my uh, drilling tool, I'm um, basically just frozen here. So I'm going to stop this and uh, I'm going to quit out of that and bring up FreeCAD again. I'm going to go back to my drilling tool and set a feed rate on here of 500. And uh, you see I've already got the feed rate set for my two flute. And now if I select the job oops, and run run the commodics simulation and launch the project file as before. Now when I run the simulator it'll start moving and as I noted it's running in real time so this is how long it would take to actually complete. Now, if you don't want to sit around for that long, you can speed up the simulation. And here in the uh, status line, it's showing how fast it's running. So Chemotics is a very powerful simulator. It does have some limitations. Uh, to my knowledge, it can't do fourth and fifth axis rotations at this point. But it does have some special features for rendering, uh, like uh, laser intensity, which can be useful for other kinds of um, other kinds of tool paths and if you happen to have a build botix control you can control that uh, directly from the simulator and to exit from the Camotix uh, task panel in FreeCAD is the same thing with the OK and cancel and uh, if you have generated a mesh uh, exiting with OK will leave it behind just like it did with uh, uh, the internal simulator well, I hope you found that helpful, and if you did, I hope you'll consider supporting me uh, if you want to see more PATH development or one of the other FreeCAD developers. A number of us have pages on Patreon, and support is always appreciated. You can also support the FreeCAD project as a whole, and I'll leave some links to that down below. Of course, the best thing you can do is get involved and uh, help out and contribute. Uh, anyway, that's all I've got for today. Thanks for watching.